Last time, we looked at Khan's algorithm, which is one technique to perform topological sorting. Today, let's look at a completely different method called Tajan's algorithm. You're watching another episode of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. So today we're going to talk about Tajan's algorithm, which of course performs a topological sorting. Now, this algorithm is actually strongly based on depth-first search. Recall how depth-first search on a graph works. Basically, the idea is it goes as far as it possibly can, and then it comes back. And at every opportunity that it can take to go further down into the graph, it will seize that opportunity. Tajan's algorithm actually makes use of this to generate a topological sorting. And that sort of makes a lot of sense. Because of course, if you go as far as you possibly can, that node you are reaching should be very late on in the topological sorting. Because of course, it has a lot of predecessors. So you can kind of see the intuition here. The earlier I pick a node in my depth first search, the later it must appear in my topological sorting. On a similar vein, the last vertices that I actually look at in my depth first search are the vertices that come first. So with this in mind, let's jump into a trace of Tajan's algorithm. So well, this is the code of Tajan's algorithm. As we've mentioned, this is essentially just depth-first search. In fact, this is the recursive formulation of depth-first search. And you can see that from this visit procedure right here, at some points it actually calls itself. Which is why of course in this trace, things get a little bit more complicated we do have to actually bear in mind what is the recursion stack. But not to worry, I will of course walk you through and try to keep things as clear as I possibly can. So let's begin. First of all, we of course need to prepare some data structures. We will need an array called results. This is how we actually keep track of the results of our topological sorting. We also create an array called visited. It is a Boolean array with everything initialized to false. Of course, we don't have this on screen. We will indicate this by coloring the nodes as they become visited. So all right, while there is any node at all that has not been visited, well, we visit that particular node. And in this case, we begin with A. So visit is called on A. We want to check all the neighbors connected to A. And basically for every neighbor, well, we run visit again on them recursively. That is why we basically halt the execution of visit on A while we wait for the execution of visit on B to complete. So the same process repeats over. We look for the neighbors of B and well, we pick one and we visit it. Now, very similarly to Khan's algorithm, which we've seen last time, the nodes don't have to be taken in any particular order which is why I've chosen an arbitrary order. In fact, I have chosen a particular order that will get me to J the quickest because I need to do that to demonstrate the rest of this algorithm. So don't mind me, we're gonna pick E this time just because it's convenient for me. We'll soon see that it doesn't actually matter and because topological sorts don't have to be unique, we can get away with doing things like this. Anyway, now that we are at E, let us try to move on again. The two nodes leading out from E go to G and J. For my purposes, I'm going to pick J. So we're going to go there. And once again, the same code is going to run. J is going to try and look for its neighbors. And we're going to realize it has no neighbors. What that means, of course, is that we can now set visited on J to true. And we can add J to the beginning of the result. So now we have one item in the result. And that is the end of this call of visit. So of course, because this call has ended right here, we will continue with the previous call, and that will be at node E. So E has already visited J in its previous run, so now it's going to go straight to G. G will of course try to go down to J, and at J, what we realize is that, well, this conditional is now no longer true. And as a result, none of the logic runs, we basically just skip to the very end, and we jump back immediately. Since G has no more neighbors, we can basically finish up. 
we mark G as true, and we add G to the beginning of result. So do note what we are doing here. As I've already mentioned, the earlier you visit a node, the later it appears in the topological sorting, which is why every time we visit a node, we have to stick it to the front of the result, not at the back. Because of course, if we add it to the back, then we get an inverse order. So anyway, now that we're done with G, we can backtrack once again to the node E. Now, E no longer has any other edges to visit, since it's just visited G, it's just visited J, and it's basically done. So we mark it as visited, and we add E to the result. So we can now backtrack further. B was the one who called E, so we backtrack to B. The only other edge going out of B goes to C. So we pop over to C, we look at its neighbors, which are H and F. In this case, completely arbitrarily, we pick H. H only has one outgoing edge once again, so we go down to J. We realize that J has been visited, so we do nothing, allowing us to backtrack to H. H has no more neighbors, which is why we are done with this particular node. We simply add H to the start of the result, and we can backtrack once again to C. The only other neighbor connected to C is F, so we go over to F. F only has one neighbor, which is I, so we go over to that. I only has one neighbor, which is H, so we go to that. Since H is visited, we can do nothing, we can simply backtrack. This allows us to add I to the result. We backtrack further, this allows us to add F to the result. We backtrack once again, this allows us to add C to the result. In fact, we can backtrack once more to B, adding that to the result as well. Finally, this allows us to backtrack to where it all began, which is node A. So node A still has two outgoing edges, so we have to visit C, but we realize that C has been visited before, so we don't do anything, and we return straight to A. There is still one more neighbor, so we can't stop just yet. We move over to D. D has two neighbors, so we first go over to F, and we see it's been visited so we don't do anything. Similarly, I has also been visited, so yeah, we don't do anything with that either. Of course, that means that we are done processing node D, allowing us to add it to the result. Finally, we can backtrack once more to A. Since it has no more neighbors, we can add that to the result as well. And that concludes our trace of Tarjan's algorithm. As you can see, really what we are doing is just depth first search but we are taking note of our results as we go along. When it comes to analyzing the time complexity of Tarjan's algorithm, well, we're going to cheat. You see, Tarjan's algorithm, while it looks like, you know, a kind of hefty algorithm in and of itself, really, we don't have to try and break it down line by line. Instead, because it is based off depth first search, in fact, it is actually depth first search with a minor tweak. It really takes the same amount of time as depth first search. And that is O V plus E. So yeah, that just saved us a whole bunch of trouble. That was Tarjan's algorithm, one of two different ways we've actually looked at to approach topological sorting. Basically, that's it for topological sorting. We are going to slowly steer back towards you know, talking about pathfinding again. In the next episode will be a bit of a jumble. We'll be looking at, you know, a little bit of topo sort. We'll be looking at a little bit of pathfinding. We'll even go all the way back to BFS and DFS. So yeah, once we are done with that, we can move on to the even harder things. So I hope you're looking forward to all that. Anyway, that's all the rest for this episode of Graph Theory. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.